Imagine that it's 1972 and you're cruising down Main Street in your dad's T-Bird with your girl in the passenger seat. You need some tunes, so you pop in that 8-track from some new band called The Eagles. Life is pretty good. That sounds nice in an overly nostalgic, dazed and confused sort of way. And if you've ever thought about 8-track tapes at all, it was probably in that kind of context, as older and bigger versions of compact cassette tapes. But 8-track is actually a lot more interesting than you think. To prove it, I created an interactive game that runs entirely from an 8-track tape in an unmodified 8-track player. Before we get to that, let me indulge in a little backstory. I was born in 1988, and until CDs finally became affordable in the late 90s, our family listened to music on vinyl records and cassettes. I would occasionally see 8-track tape decks in older cars, but even that was pretty unusual. In fact, I didn't get much real hands-on experience with the medium until about 10 years ago when I purchased an old Jeep Wagoneer that still had the original factory stereo, along with one copy of the Carpenter's self-titled album on 8-track in the glove box. Thanks to my hipster tendencies, I developed an interest in 8-track technology. Some of you may recall the Kaboom Box project I did last year which was based on the very cool Panasonic TNT 8-track player. But that video got blasted by copyright strikes, and I didn't talk a whole lot about 8-track technology anyway, because the Kaboom box had modern electronic components inside. That was a missed opportunity, so I want to rectify that and show you why 8-track tapes are actually very clever and can be used in ways you probably haven't considered. Let's start with a basic fact that surprised me. 8-track cassettes are actually newer, than compact cassettes, which are usually what people are talking about when they say tapes or cassettes. Compact cassettes hit the market in 1963, while 8-track cassettes came out in 1964. In 1965, Ford began offering 8-track players in some of its cars, including the Mustang and Thunderbird. On a surface level, compact cassettes and 8-track cassettes are similar in a few key ways. Both store analog audio on reels of magnetic tape, both store that tape inside plastic cassettes, both have provisions for stereophonic playback, and both are suitable for portable players. The biggest difference, aside from form factor, is how they physically contain the magnetic tape within the plastic enclosure, and that influences everything about their characteristics and use cases. Compact cassettes store the tape on two reels. As with a reel-to-reel -reel machine, the tape starts wound on one spool inside the cassette enclosure. As it plays, the tape moves over from that to a second spool, playing one song after the next. When the full length of the tape moves from one spool to the other, the user must physically flip the cassette over or rewind it to continue listening. Flipping it plays the opposite side of the magnetic tape, which can contain additional songs. Eight-track cassettes, on the other hand, store the tape as one continuous loop. There is only one spool inside, and the tape feeds from that across the playback head, and then back onto itself. There isn't any end to the tape, and it will just keep looping indefinitely. The 8-track cassette can't be flipped over, and there isn't even a way to rewind the tape, because the continuous loop can only spool properly in one direction. So, if you want to hear a song again, you just have to wait for it to come back around on the loop. Though most players do have a fast-forward function. On top of that, the loop isn't very long. This cassette, for example, only has 10 minutes of audio before it loops back around. That all sounds pretty bad, right? An 8-track is bigger than a compact cassette, loops every 10 minutes, and can't even be rewound. It's a wonder they sold any of these things. But 8-track technology had a nifty trick up its sleeve, and it's right there in the name. The tape contained 8 audio tracks, and they all played simultaneously. I made a little game to illustrate this concept. It's an interactive trivia game, and I convinced my wife to play on camera so you can see it in action. While watching, keep those eight tracks in mind and see if you can figure out how I made this work. Hey there, friend. Did you know that your USB cable could be stopping your devices from charging as fast as they could? It's true. The various fast charging standards, such as power delivery, require a cable that can handle enough current to support the additional power transmission. Standard USB cables often slow charging down, even if both the charger and device support faster speeds. If you want a new cable, this 4-in-1 model from this video's sponsor, Xcool, is a great option. It can handle up to 100 watts of power and has a very handy connector system that makes it suitable for 
almost any device. One end lets you switch between a USB-A connector and a USB-C connector, while the other end lets you switch between a USB-C and Lightning connector. No more carrying around a bundle of different cables every time you go on a trip. I was able to use the cable for some testing I was doing with the Spark Analyzer board, which controls power delivery. With the generic cable I had in my Boxo cables, I couldn't get the full power. With the Xcools cable, I could. Simple as that. I'll put a link in the video's description for anyone who wants to purchase the cable. Now, back to the video. So now you will play the game by putting this in, and as soon as you put it in, it'll start. the game show intro music. <laughs> Good evening and thanks for tuning in to everybody's favorite tape-based game show, 8-Track <laughs> Trivia. Here's how it works. I will ask you a multiple choice question and list the four potential answers labeled as red, yellow, green, and blue. You will have 15 seconds to figure out the answer and then switch your 8-Track player to the corresponding program. When the time is up, I'll tell you if you're right or wrong. Get it? All right, let's start. In the category of musical classics, your question is, Sir Mix-a-Lot's song, Baby Got Back, is also known by what other name? The right answer is, I cannot lie. The yellow answer is, I like big butts. The green answer is, my anaconda don't want none. The blue answer is, oh my God, Becky, look at her butt. It is so big. You have 15 seconds to change the program to the color of your answer. So it's the name of the song? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I believe that's correct. <laughs> that's right. The answer is, I like big butts. You sure do like wow. music and probably like a juicy dump truck too. Let's move on to our <laughs> next question in the category of silver screen sensations. What TV show featured the fictional band Drive Shaft? The red answer is Lost. The yellow answer is Stargate SG-1. The green answer is Breaking Bad. The blue answer is Glee. Hmm. Hmm. Indeed. Hmm. Wrong. At least this answer makes sense, <laughs> since that show was about music and stuff. I think. I don't know. I didn't watch it. All right, folks, that's our game. Thanks for tuning in, and maybe consider subscribing to the channel of the guy that put all this work into creating a game <laughs> just to illustrate how 8-track tapes work. <laughs> Good night. I cut that clip down for time, but you can see the whole thing on my new Patreon. Supporters get access to that, other behind the scenes stuff, and the ability to see these videos early. Anyway, were you able to figure out how the game worked? As I said, the magnetic tape inside of an 8-track cassette has eight audio tracks running side by side. This is a stereo medium which requires two tracks, one for the left channel and one for the right channel. Therefore, there are four content streams running simultaneously, and they're called programs. Because all four programs run concurrently, an 8-track player can switch between them almost instantly. Inside the player, there is a mechanism that literally moves the playback head very slightly to pick up the next program's track. When listening to a compact cassette, you might play the entire tape and then flip it over to play the rest. When listening to an 8-track cassette, you might play the loop once, then switch to program two, on the second loop, then switch to program three on the third loop, then program four on the fourth loop. Players usually had a mechanism to automatically advance to the next program after each loop to make that a little bit easier. You could also switch to different programs at any arbitrary time to listen to a specific song if you knew you'd reached that point in the loop. That's a big part of the reason why the most popular application for 8-track players was in cars, at least in the US. Drivers could leave them in their tape decks and let them loop endlessly without having to rewind or bother with flips. That idea might seem absurd today, but for decades people were happy to listen to the same albums on repeat. This program system is also how I was able to create the interactive trivia game that knows if the player gets the answer wrong or right. All four programs are identical. 
The only exception is the short clip after the timer dings. Those clips are unique to each program. So if the correct answer is the yellow answer and the player switches to the yellow program, they'll hear audio from the yellow recording telling them that they got the answer right. At the exact same time, the other three programs, red, green, and blue, are playing their respective recordings that tell the player that their answer was wrong. If the player had chosen the blue answer instead by switching to the blue program, they would have heard the rejection instead of the confirmation. To create the game, I simply recorded all of the questions. Then I recorded a response for each question on each program. Those files were all in Audacity for easy selection and playback on my computer. This 8-track player has a recording function, which is why I bought it. I was able to feed it the output from my computer to record the four programs separately, each starting at the beginning of the loop. Pretty clever, right? Unfortunately, I can't take credit for the idea. This exact same concept was put into commercial production by multiple companies. I learned about this from Techmoan, who has videos about a Milton Bradley game machine called the Omni Entertainment System and a toy called 2XL. Both of those relied on concepts very similar to my trivia game, and I think they're pretty remarkable. It's safe to say that nobody was thinking about games like these when they developed 8-track technology. People are just ingenious and manage to do amazing things within the limitations and constraints they're given. But as fascinating as all of this is, it's easy to see why 8-tracks were never particularly popular. They had some success in Japanese karaoke machines and some other niche situations, but didn't achieve the commercial success of compact cassettes. In retrospect, we can all figure out the reasons for that. Compact cassettes were far smaller, which was a big deal when portable players became must-have devices. Compact cassettes also had greater capacity, better audio quality, after years of refinement at least, and the ability to rewind. And compact cassette reliability was much better, as the 8-track continuous loop had a tendency to become tangled. However, as with compact cassettes, 8-tracks still have an enthusiast community there are even some new album releases on 8-track today. Some indie labels, for example, sell new albums on 8-track. Even Dolly Parton released an album on 8-track in 2020 called A Holly Dolly Christmas. But I don't think anyone is trying to claim that 8-tracks are superior to other analog formats. The people using them today just enjoy the nostalgia and quirky experience. As you now know, that 8-track experience is a lot different from what you get from a compact cassette. Thanks for watching.